Hi, this is a quick vid to show you how you might set up a site plan using Photoshop, but really you could use any program that you are familiar with, uh, let's say Adobe InDesign or even Microsoft Word, to lay out the pages in your site plan. So I'm going to show you, this is a sample website that I've created uh, for my design portfolio. And so if you are doing a site plan for your e-portfolio, it may be, look something like this. So in this website, I have a header with my logo. Then I have uh, links to other pages on my website. So I have six other pages on my website plus my home page. So that's seven pages total. And then I have a footer area with links to email me and to the App State university website. So those don't count as additional pages on my site, but those are just um, hyperlinks to other websites. So if I click on one of these pages, it will take me to another page on my site. And then I can always go back to the home page. So I have that linked here as part of the footer. And then I can go to another page on my site and then go back to the home page. So in Photoshop, I'm going to set up something that, like this. And I have these set up as groups and layers. So if I'm going to turn off all these groups and show you one at a time, I have my home page. And then you can see in the white, when the white text shows up, that the home page is live and active. Then I have my About Me page, a contact page, a portfolio page, and these are all sibling pages. So they're all sibling as shown here in my navigation. Uh, so I've got the home page, the about me, contact, and portfolio. Then I have some child pages attached to my portfolio page. For example, if you click on this graphic design icon, it'll take you to the graphic design page. Then within that page, you can see my graphic design portfolio. Then on the portfolio page, you can also link to the photography page. And then you can see additional um, samples of photography on that page. Then illustration, and then same thing here with the illustration page. So I have these three child pages that are child or children of this portfolio page. But I really have a total of about seven pages here. So these four sibling pages, then three extra child pages coming off of the portfolio page. So for the wireframing, what I want you to show me is something like this. Your color scheme, header, navigation, any photo frames, text frames, and a footer. And that's really all that you need to show me as far as the wireframing at this point. So you don't have to actually put in your logo and your images and your text, but you can just kind of put in filler text. But give me the directions of what's going to go in those frames, in those boxes. So if you were to set up something like this, I'm going to go to File, New in Photoshop. And when you go to File, New, you can select Web here and Photoshop actually offers some wireframing kits that are free downloads. Um, so these are templates that you're welcome to use. I haven't been able to get it to work uh, to be able to download onto my account. But if you're able to do that, you're welcome to use that. But I'm just going to show you how you would set it up um, without using the template. So I'm going to select Web Large, and there's the standard format, but instead of 1080 pixels in height. I'm going to change that to 2080 because I want it to be um, higher so that I have more room to work with. And I'm going to go ahead and change my resolution to 96 instead of 72. Um, and then because we're in using the web format, it's already showing um, the RGB color mode for us. And I'm just going to choose a background of white and go ahead and create that. So now I've got an artboard created, and I can go to my rectangle frame tool, my rectangle shape tool, all right, and just create a rectangular box. 
Um, and then it automatically fills in the color that is set to the foreground color, and I can go back and change that. So what you want to do is you want to select Web Colors, and if you go back to our Google Hangout page, you can see a link to Web Safe Colors, and there are lots of sites that have um, Web Safe Color charts that you can use, so this is just one that you can access. But here, I've used the color mode up here. Let's say I want to choose a gray color. I can just kind of choose something within the gray range to go and go to get info, and it'll give me the numbers that I need to plug that into Photoshop or whatever program I'm working with. And what I do is I just use my notes or text editor and just copy and paste these colors in. So I've selected three colors here, a tan color, a gray, and um, what I call a slate color. And I just copy and pasted the ID number and then the um, three RGB numbers that I'll need. And I'm keeping that open for reference. Then I can go back to Photoshop and plug those colors in. So I can go to um, my color palette. So I can go to Window, Swatches, or Colors, and then go to New Swatch and then type in the name. So let's say I want to type in this tan color. I copy and paste that in. And then just type in the RGB colors for that color. So this, I'm just going to delete that because, oops, I deleted the wrong thing. But I'm going to just trash that because I've already got my three colors plugged in here. So I have my tan, my gray, and my slate color. And so let's say I want my rectangles to be gray, so I'm going to select this gray color, go back to my rectangle tool, open up my layers panel, and create a new layer, and then just create a rectangle, and it's going to automatic, automatically fill it with that gray color. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit because I want to have room to put three rectangles here across here. And if I hold down the Option key, I can drag let me go ahead and apply that so that I can just duplicate these three layers. And you can see that's a little bit large for this size, so I'm going to shrink that down by holding down the Shift key. And then I'm just going to apply that and delete my two copies for now. So what I want to do is I want to work in this one layer on this rectangle. And once I've got the basic master page, then I can copy that into my other pages. So there are different ways you can do this. If you want to just do one large master page on a separate page maybe and show me the layout for that. Um, and then you can do more basic layouts for each page. You can do a separate page for a master page layout. But I'm just going to do it this way, lay out fully what I want on this page, and then clone it on the rest of the pages. So you'll see um, as I begin working on that what it'll look like. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to start by going to my Type tool. And I'm just going to type in a header here. So I'm going to call this K Bishop Design. And you can see nothing is showing up because I've got the gray text selected. So I'm going to go back and select the slate text now. i got to get out of here first. And then I can highlight my text and select that slate color. I can also adjust my size. I'm going to go up to 24. Um, I'm going to open up my characters panel here. And I want to use the option menu and make that all caps and then use my Move tool, and I'm going to use my Smart Guides to try to center that. And then go back to my Type tool, open up my layers again. And that at this point, I'm going to go to my Options menu and Layers and create a group. And I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to call this Home, because this is going to be my home page. And I want to put all these layers inside that folder in my home page folder. And this just helps to keep everything organized because I'm going to have a lot of different layers here. I'm going to create another type layer under my header, and this will be my navigation. 
So I'm going to put um, home page. I'm going to change the type size there to 10. Hit the tab. Uh, I'm going to have an about me page, contact page, and then the portfolio. Oops, check my spelling. Use the move tool to move this kind of right under my header. And again, I'm just doing this real quick, so you would want to adjust your layout more. Uh, but then, now I want to add a graphic frame, so I'm just going to create a new layer here, put it inside my home folder, and go back to that rectangle frame. I've got the tan color selected. Going to my rectangle tool, and now I've created another frame and I'm going to add some text over that and just type in photo goes here just so I have some direction. I'm going to switch that color. I'm going to open up my type tool, switch the color here to the slate color and I'm just going to type in the numbers here 0, 51, 51. and center that text. Then I want to create a footer down here. So in my layers, again, I'm still on my home page group. And I'm going to go to my type tool and type in some text. I always forget. I'm going to switch to my slate color here. And I'm going to move that layer up so I can see it. And then I don't want that to be all caps, so I'm going to change that. And I'm going to make my type smaller. And I'm going to name this layer, just so that it's clear, the footer. And then I'm going to make my title text layer. I'm going to rename it header. And I'm going to use my move tool in that footer text. And try to center that. I'm going to zoom in here. What I want to do now is, um, and because I'm over 100% in my view, it's going to appear pixelated, but I just want to zoom in so that I can place the copyright symbol here. So I'm just going to create a new layer and put it right under the footer there. I'm going to call this copyright. Select my custom lay custom shape tool, then go up to shape and select the copyright symbol. And select 10 by 10 pixels. And then I can move that up to where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to zoom out and then zoom back in. And again, there's some adjustments. I need to center that better, but now I've got my basic home page. And what I can do, I'm going to collapse this home group and duplicate it. So now I'm going to go to File, Duplicate Group, and I'm going to call this About Page because this is going to be the About Me page. And then back in my home page in my navigation, text. I'm going to highlight the word home and select the white color so that, let me try that again, so that I know that I'm on the home page in this layout.
I've duplicated this to the About page. I'm going to collapse my Home page. I'm on the About page. Then I'm going to change the text on the About page. So that the About Me page shows white. And then I can change this layout around. So I want to change the um, frame here. And I can change the text around. And I'm just going to zoom out and go to my other page that's done so that you can see. Zoom in here better. I've got, I've adjusted the size of this photo. I'm showing that this photo is going to go here. I can even be more specific and say photo, a headshot is going to go here, or a black and white photo. I can have placeholder text here, say this is going to be an introduction about me. Here my footer and my header and my navigation is the same basic layout. My color scheme is the same. Then on my contact page, I've got text that says, that my contact form is going to go here. And then underneath that, um, this is another sibling page for my portfolio. And now I've got three different photos that are going to showcase graphic design, photography, and illustration. Then the child pages from that are going to show the specific works for graphic design, photography, and illustration. So again, just use the placeholder boxes and text. You don't have to actually put the graphics on there yet, but I do want to see some color and I want to see the layout. Again, you can always change this layout later on when you actually do your ePortfolio, but have a basic idea of your structure. And this should be well thought out. So after you've watched the wireframing video and you've done your sketches, then you move to this stage and this will be what you turn in. So again, um, let me go to all the layers. So I've got my home page layer about contact, portfolio, then those specific uh, child pages coming off of the portfolio page. So you, all you have to do is create your first your home page, then duplicate that group uh, as a new grouped layer, and then you can work from there. So that's kind of an easy way to work as you structure your site. And then when you are ready to save, this will save it as a TIFF file. So make sure you save the TIFF file or the Photoshop file with all of your separate layers so you can go back and change it later. But then you can actually save this as a GIF file or a JPEG, but because I, don't, I only am using flat colors here, a GIF file will be fine or even a PNG, but I don't have any transparency here, so I'm just going to save this as a GIF. And I've already done that here, so I'm just going to open that up. When you open up the GIF, you can see that you're going from a TIFF file that's a lot um, larger than the GIF, so you're going to go to it when you save to a GIF, you really keep your file size down, and then all you have to turn in is that GIF file. You can submit it to the As You Learn. And then I can take a look at your file here. If you want to upload your TIFF file so I can see all your layers, that's fine, but it's really not necessary. Um, I just need to see your layout that, um, for your site plan in one layer, really. Make sure that it's clear so that I, that I know what all the pages are and where your graphics and text are going to be on your page, that it's clearly laid out where everything's going to be. And that is it for your site layout.